Hey, what's going on internet? In this video, we're gonna talk about creating three different types of popular transitions inside of After Effects. I hope everyone's having an excellent day today. My name is Josh Noel and I'm from Sunduck Film. So there are so many different types of popular transitions out there right now. And I wanted to create this video showcasing just a few of them and how we can create them inside of After Effects. So these are the three types of transitions we're going to create in this tutorial. And without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and jump into our screen recording and let's create these awesome transitions. So we're gonna create these three types of morph transitions very easily here inside of After Effects. And they're really fun to do. So let's go ahead and go to our tutorial composition. And for all these transitions, all you need to do is have your two clips lined up, you know, side by side as if they're going, you know, sequential order like this. And then you place your transition mostly on top of that cut there. So we have two clips here. And the first thing we want to do is go to layer, new adjustment layer. Then we'll come here to effect stylize and we'll add motion tile. And very easy to do. So we'll kind of go forward a few frames here. So we'll want to give it like maybe a half of a second before our first clip ends and we'll come here and we'll add a keyframe for tile center and we'll move forward say a half a second past the second clip here so we have some like a good second of transition time here and then what we'll do is come here to tile center and grab that y value and we can just move this down kind of like a you know like a film strip if you will and we'll want to match up the end of our transition to you know be on the full screen of our second clip and now that this is animated we can see that our clip is going to be repeated moving in e any direction that we animated in so even so we can even move it in like the x position if you want to do that so that's really cool and then i'll just hit u to bring up our keyframes and we'll come here to the first keyframe here and we'll make them both easy ease keyframes by hitting f9 on our keyboard and then we'll apply effect that i'd like to do is go to effect distort and we're going to add optics compensation and we can come here and increase the field of view uh, to maybe about 60 and check on reverse lens distortion and it's kind of cool because it kind of like skews and stretches the image towards the edges and gives it more of a unique perspective on the transition so to animate this all we have to do is maybe go forward a few frames here add a keyframe for field of view since we already have it up to you know 90 and then let's hit U on our keyboard so we can see that keyframe there and we go towards the last motion tile keyframe and add a keyframe for optics compensation move forward to the last keyframe for motion tile and you click on reset here at the top Go to the first keyframe for motion tile and click on reset again. And then make these all easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And of course, toggle switch the modes until you see this motion blur icon. Turn it on there and turn it on the top. So now you should have a really cool morph transition going between two clips like this. And this is going to be the base building block for the next two transitions. So in our next transition technique, we're going to talk about creating a morph stretch transition. And this is pretty much the same exact thing. So we still have the motion tile and the optics compensation already set up in place. The only difference here is, is that this time we're going to affect distort and we're going to add transform to this and we're creating a stretch. So we want to uncheck uniform scale. And if you want, you can scale the width, which is kind of weird, but I like to scale the height. And this is what we want to animate here. So this will kind of stretch the image a little bit and it looks really cool. So maybe set the scale height to like 300 or so, so it's not too crazy. And we'll want to add our keyframe for scale height a little after our tile center keyframe. And then we'll move forward here back to before the motion tile comes on. And then we'll want to set the scale height back down to 100. Cool. And then we'll go forward here and we'll add a keyframe for the scale height. Move forward again before the last motion tile keyframe and set the scale height back to 100. And then make them easy ease keyframes, of course. And then let's make sure motion blur is turned on. And now here's our motion tile stretch transition. And it's really unique and looks a little bit better than the last one. So it's up to you if you want to implement the normal slide or if you want to do the stretch technique. It's really cool. So now let's move on to our last and final technique, which is the morph spin. So with the morph spin technique, we still have the same you know motion tile parameters involved. So that hasn't changed throughout the tutorial. It's always been the same. Um, but this is a little bit different. So what we're going to do is first of all go to the motion tile and check on mirror edges. So it won't seem like there's any cuts in there. And you could have implemented the mirror edges with the other two transition techniques. But for this one, this is very important to be checked on. Then let's go to effect distort and we're going to add uh, transform again. So instead of animating scale, we're going to animate the rotation because this is a spin. So we'll come here to the first motion tile keyframe and we'll add a keyframe for rotation. We'll move forward to the last keyframe and we'll set the rotation to 1x. And this will allow it to do a spin like this. And, you know, it's cool. Make sure these keyframes, of course, are easy, easy keyframes. And you can just hit U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. Then all we have to do here is kind of get rid of, you know, the edges here, which is interesting. So we'll come here to effect 
and we'll come here to distort and we're gonna add corner pin so let's come here to the first motion tile keyframe and let's add a keyframe for all the corner pins and go to the last keyframe and just bring up all the keyframes here and add a keyframe for all the corner pins at the last keyframe so we don't have to worry about any issues there and then let's come here to say like around the center where the you know the video is mostly vertical and we'll grab our corner pins you can see there's anchor points in the corners of your you know composition and we can just drag these and our goal is to cover up all the negative space in our composition and you can see that we were able to use the corner pins to cover this up and then we have to scrub through our timeline and see if there's any more black space or negative space and we'll just you know kind of move those corner pins to cover that up and then let's go through the rest of the image and you can see there's some more negative space and then of course make sure motion blur is turned on and now we should be good to go so now you have these three awesome morph transitions at your disposal and you can use them for whenever they're needed now of course if you're working like on a normal size project creating these transitions individually might take up a lot of time and might not be the best solution from a time perspective uh, and the best part about you know these type of transitions is that there are already a handful of amazing packs out there for Adobe Premiere and After Effects that contain over 1,000 transitions for a video like this. And for example, right here inside of After Effects, I have this one extension here, and this is the Handy Seamless Transitions Pack, which has its own user interface inside of After Effects. And I have a ton of different categories here. And what I can do is go to a category and preview a transition and simply just click on it. And literally within a couple seconds, we applied one out of the thousand plus transitions in this pack to our timeline. And it looks like we did some awesome work right here. And we did it in just a couple seconds, which is really cool. And of course, these types of transitions for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. So you don't even have to come to After Effects if you're using Adobe Premiere to apply these type of transitions. And if you want to learn more about the transitions pack and check out all thousand plus of these type of transitions that come in one of these packs, you can check our links in the video description. I'll link some to Adobe Premiere and the Hanley Seamless Transitions Pack, this one right here inside of After Effects. Those links will be in the description. So that concludes our tutorial on creating these three really cool transitions inside of After Effects. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.